As I look back over my career in statistics, I think the lessons that I've learned most profoundly over the years have been the times when I've had to learn from my own mistakes. And sometimes, as I'm teaching statistics, I like to teach you statistics the wrong way. I like to show you how to do it wrong. Because if you're going to learn from mistakes, the best mistakes to learn from are those mistakes made by other people. I'm gonna teach you the wrong way to calculate variability, and in doing so, it's going to become very clear why we need to calculate variability in the way that we do. So by learning it wrong, it'll be very clear why and how to do it right. For this example, we need some data. We're going to ask six dogs, how many toys do you own? And the data that we collect, eight, seven, one, three, seven, four, can be added up and divided by n to calculate a mean. The values add up to 30. There are six dogs, giving us an average of five. These dogs own an average of five toys. Notice that five does not appear in the original data set, but it still gives us a typical score, which is an average of what these dogs typically own. But now we need to measure the variability. And how are we going to do that? How can we measure the average variability within a data set? Let's take what we know about deviation scores. We can measure deviation of scores from the end of a distribution or from the middle. And we know the middle score is the mean. So what we could do is subtract every score from the mean and then use that as our measure of deviation. That makes sense. But, the mean average deviation is the wrong way to calculate variability. And let me show you why. In this table, we have placed the scores, the number of dog toys owned by each dog, in the first column. We have calculated the mean and put that number in the second column to make it easier to do the math. We are going to subtract the mean from each raw score to get a deviation score. 8 minus 5 is 3. 7 minus 5 is 2. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. We could complete the table in this same way. When we calculate a mean, we add up the scores and divide by n. If we calculate the average deviation, we would add up the deviation scores and divide by the total number of scores. Well, let's do that. When we add up the deviation scores in this data set, the deviations total to zero, meaning that we have zero variability in this data set. We know the data set does have variability because not all the scores are the same, and yet, Using the mean average deviation leads us to a point where we cannot measure variability. And why is that? Remember that the mean is the mathematical center. It's the middle of the, dis of the distribution. Scores above cancel out scores below. Deviations above cancel out deviations below the mean. The mean subtracted from every raw score will always give us an average deviation of zero, making the mean average deviation completely useless as a measure of variability. But we are still going to need to measure variability in some way. The problem is those negative and positive values. How could we fix this problem? One approach we could try is called the mean absolute deviation. We could simply change the negative scores to positive scores and then add up the deviations and divide by n. However, although that would work, mathematically it'll cause some problems. It's going to be much easier to do the algebra that is required for statistics if we take a different approach. Statistical software like JASP will allow us to calculate the mean absolute deviation. 
However, we're not going to be using it for any of the calculations for this course. Instead, we have a better way. It involves the sum of squares, the variance, and the standard deviation.